Frozen Music is a video series from ABB presenting unique building projects and the architects behind them to a global community. Follow us around the world. Welcome back, and now we're going to hear about the winner of the Future Project category, sorry, sorry the uh, Infrastructure Future Project category, and it's called Replant, an inclusive waste energy plant and recycling plant concept, and to tell us about it are 70F Architecture, so please start the presentation. Hi, uh, my name is Boston Brinke, 70F Architecture in Almere, the Netherlands. Uh, thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, we designed a uh, high efficiency waste to energy plant and um, we did this for the Harvest Waste Company and I will tell you a little bit about the machine later. This is our office uh, close to Amsterdam, current team and this is the team that worked on the project. Uh, Harvest Waste, our client, developed this uh, uh, very high efficient uh, waste to energy plant and we decided to turn it into an inclusive recycle and upcycle park. Let me show you a movie explaining a little bit the concept. Um, so there you go, um, it's a concept literally and it's very flexible, it is adaptable, that's what it uh, should be, uh, because it will be uh, installed in various uh, uh, upcoming economies, especially third and second world countries where there is a, a very interesting problem where we see that people are uh, earning more money, buying more stuff, uh, consuming more and therefore generating more waste, but also needing more power. So this machine that, that Harvest Waste designed is a very efficient way of burning waste and then generating energy from it. Uh, the problem or the challenge for us is to design a, not a building, but it's more like a park. We designed like a, like a landscape, landscape architecture building 
that can be much more than this. And to, our mission is to make it a, a zero waste in the end. As in, uh, zero, nothing comes out of this village. Uh, everything is used and reused in the process. And the main thing is to make it an inclusive project, as in, we want to include local parties, local entrepreneurs, local people, um, uh, anything that has to do with uh, with the current uh, situation uh, to make it an inclusive project and to to raise the standard of life and living in general um, and that's what we did and, and we found this concept and I will show you I will tell you some examples uh, obviously rain water harvesting for cooling water not every site has, has water available uh, and you, you will need a lot of it uh, green areas covering the building, if you could call it the building, even. And from the front, uh, this building will read like a factory. From the side, it will read like a park. You won't even see that it's a, it's a factory. Um, and that's the trick also to be able to go there and just have fun on the roof of this factory. Uh, with your children, uh, join in on educational program or go to the restaurant, you know, which is also on site. And the restaurant uses vegetables from the greenhouse and the greenhouse is powered by the CO2 that's captured from the chimney. Uh, so that's just one example of what this thing does. Uh, another thing is there is a lot of ashes. The main thing remaining from this process is ashes and heavy metals. Heavy metals, uh, we have designed plant beds, specific plants that basically eat the, the heavy metals and make them disappear. And the other thing is the ashes is there could be a local entrepreneur interested in uh, using these ashes as a fill material for either concrete or resin panels for facade building. And our dream would definitely be that this, this, this machine, this village uh, builds itself just by doing what it does. Um, do you see the floor plan? And this is again a concept, but as you can imagine, a very flexible concept because any entrepreneur or whoever wants to join in from the city or village could start a business in one of the strips and uh, be part of this uh, eco village. Uh, obviously, uh, and not an existing site. Uh, some sections to show uh, that the whole machine and the whole process, which is a very efficient uh, process of, of, uh, of dealing with waste, uh, fits. But at the same time, uh, again, it's a park where the cooling water is turned into the cooling water basin is turned into a to, to an infinity pool for whoever works there. And to show you a little bit, the proposed first location is in, in Palestine. It's very interesting. You can see the blue marker here. And uh, we expect to go there in Q1 next year to, um, to make sure that that we can we can flex the concept into the actual building that needs to be there. Uh, this is just north of a, a huge landfill that was started in, I think it was in 89. And um, by now it, it is the Palestine landfill. Obviously uh, a problem now. Not, it seems like a solution 30 years ago, but now we need to move on. So there you go. I think that's basically what we proposed and are going to build. <clears throat> well, thank you for, for that. Can I just start with, with one question that presumably all the waste that is uh, uh, converted into power has to be brought in by trucks of some sort. And how is that managed? Because I imagine that there's quite a lot, there's a big volume of material that, that will be um, incinerated or whatever the process is to convert, to, to generate power. Yeah, definitely. Um, and part of the project is to have local stations and a local uh, uh, waste 
waste truck company, if you could say so, uh, is included in, in the consortium to get to make sure that we actually get enough enough waste, solid waste to burn. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, not everything is usable for this, uh, but we need to process everything. And uh, often in these cities, like in India, in India, for instance, we see that there isn't a real waste system uh, up and running. So part of the concept, even in, 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 in those countries, would be to introduce a waste system locally uh, that ends here in this village. Uh, and the other thing is uh, the upcycling part of it, where you would, as, as it is happening now, already there, people will just, some people will live off, off, the, off, the, off the dump site, uh, which we don't understand, but there is very normal, uh, or can be normal. And um, yeah, upcycling stuff, as in building new things from old things, is something we provide also in this, in this village. There will be a store that you can buy. Mm stuff that is made by local people that used to do the same thing uh, on a dump site in a very unsafe conditions. Mm. And it, it presumably it generates power and the power yeah, is distributed yeah. by, um, you know, sort of power cables in, in, in of, a, of a relatively familiar type. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, it, it so provides power. What to goes the city. in can what goes in comes in trucks and what goes out is through cables. Yes, and uh, but the thing is that the residue of the process is reduced to zero. And this is the unique part mm. because there, uh, from any kind of power generation, there, there will always be something left, uh, like the CO2, for instance. Um, mm. and, uh, and our dream is to make this like uh, the, the only thing that would come out of it is something that you need, which is power, and not something that mm. pollutes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anko, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, I was wondering, uh, what would be the life cycle of a plant like this? Like, is it well, going I to think, exist um, for... That very much depends on, uh, on our progress yeah, no, in, in I, the I, world. I, I, or, I'll tell waste. you the context um, of my. Sure. No, I'll I'll tell you the context of my question. I was just wondering since uh, he spoke about bringing the waste to the plant, and you know, you uh, in India, and I, I'm sure in in most places the challenge with landfills is that they kind of keep growing, and then at a point when the city kind of either goes too close to it or you start uh, you want to move the landfill out of that place, is at least that's the challenge we face. That most of the landfills kind of rise up to a point and then they are moved out of the city or away from the city. And uh, I was just wondering, is there a way to look at the solution and build it like a moving plant so that rather than you have to, you could move closer to the landfill and probably mm -hmm. also start impacting the environment around it and, you know, kind of look at it from that perspective. Yeah, sure. Is well, a it is flexible. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it is a flexible concept and the technical layout and the technical uh, the production of, the, of this machine that builds itself would also be a circular solution in a building technique, as in we could move it if we want to or have to. Uh, ultimately, uh, there shouldn't be any waste in the world whatsoever. But this is a dream. Until that time, this, this thing should be moving around. I think you're right. Yeah. Mariana, would you like to ask a question? What is the construction method there? It's a prefab. I didn't quite understand. It's in concrete. Uh, not necessarily concrete, because I don't think the spans that we need will be efficient enough in concrete. And the thing is that I would, in any case, like to look at any local solutions. So we presented the concept that that. Uh, could change in its final design version mm -hmm. based on whatever is available because I'm not interested in uh, importing huge amounts of steel from China to make it happen. Uh, so let's first look mm -hmm. at in Palestine, for instance, at local industries and local available materials to see how we can make this look the same, um, which is the challenge for architects anyway. So that's the fun part, I would say. Just give me the toolbox mm -hmm. and I will make you the building. Yeah, I, lo I love the idea and the concept 
And uh, at first I was a bit scared that it could look a bit caricature, the thing with the skylight. But in the end, I think you solved it very well. Mm. Nice design. Thank you. Thank you. Peter. Yes, I realize that the, the concept is, is interesting and that, that you have a <clears throat> you have an element and then you make a container. And then you seem to have many, many containers. And I begin to wonder though, when I look again, to what extent the one-to-one the -one relationship between a very specific activity and a very specific arrangement of machinery or whatever and the container happens. And at what point does it become just a little bit of formal exercise? Because you then said <coughs> people would move in because they want to be part of the thing. At that point, I wonder if the, if the rather consistent nature of the boxes is, becomes a man If you follow me, that, that it starts off by being, <coughs> as I say, purposeful. And then in certain stages of the building, it's because it's, it's doing that kind of thing. It goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, Peter, I'm sorry to say that your sound is dropping. I don't know if it's my... Oh my God. Or... <coughs> I'm, I'm having this problem more even. Yes, it, I'm, I'm interested in the relationship between the container and the necessity for that particular container to be that particular size. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I think that is, I mean, that's the main thing with this concept yeah. is that we do, what you see here is nothing that will ever be built like this because the size of each element uh, will change and differ except for the machine part on whoever is joining in on the consortium or in the project. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, the, to, the, to the bottom left here, this area uh, is is in this example, it is a, a small factory where resin panels are made that include the ashes from the process. And, but it could be half the size, it very much depends. And uh, the trick is, or the dream is, to have as many people locally involved as we can and fitting this concept where height and width and length of these boxes uh, differ on demand um, and not accept the core machine because this thing as you can see it in front of you as you see it now could be half the size if you would consider having it just as a factory which is not our interest <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and obviously each iteration of, of this concept will be different but the one you're looking at in Palestine if that's the most developed approximately how much power will you be able to generate with that and how many tons of waste will you recycle? There's a, there's a very good question. We, uh, the consortium has just uh, signed all contracts, including uh, waste uh, volume. Uh, the, the power that comes out of it, I, I just cannot tell you. Um, I can tell you it's a vast amount and that the waste solution as in it is it is north of the main landfill of Palestine so my and it's going to be the first and only uh, of these plants in Palestine so I'm guessing that the the volume that we get to get to produce is um, is is as high as it can get for such a country I don't have any exact numbers for you. Right, right. And can you say a bit more about the, <clears throat> the, the fact that there is no waste whatsoever? So what does happen to the CO2, which must come off when you burn things? Yeah, the, the, well, the first thing is, is that we capture the CO2, which is a possible process, a technical issue, but mm. doable. It's very doable. And the first, we, we, we use it in greenhouses that are on site. And the first greenhouse, main greenhouse, um, uh, will produce vegetables or uh, groceries for the, the on-site restaurant, which is a public restaurant that you can enter when you, when you visit the park. And obviously there's gonna be much more CO2 than, uh, than we can process in one greenhouse. 
So I'm imagining more greenhouses as part of the concept that could be even a bit bit further away uh, where the CO2 is used, producing food for local, for to be used locally, as in not to ship back to Holland uh, because it's such nice tomatoes. You know, we, we need to keep the whole thing uh, local. Uh, but that's that's uh, that's the idea of capturing the CO2 and using it, not not containing it in some kind of container and burying it on the ground. We we need a way to to use it in in, in ways that we would use it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for presenting that, and we're going to take another short break uh, before we come back to our winning leisure-led development project um, in the future projects. So we'll see you all in a moment. Thank you.